My colleague, the volcanologist uh, Armand Hoshkoltson, believes that the tension under the Grindavik will take 10 years to be relieved and mapped after that to know the amount uh, and the degree and the location of all the damages and sinkholes and cracks to be uh, you know, recorded for the safety and starting the life again. Eruption and volcanism uh, is part of the process, although it will affect the bedrock, the basaltic, the structure that is related to geology there, and they are going on fast and furious, and there is no uh, sign of it subsiding any sooner. Magma rises, as we know, the uh, mid uh, mid mid oceanic uh, ridge is extending, magma rises, reaches the surface, erupts. This will create cracks in the ground, weaknesses in the rock. Bedrock, of course, reacts to that, it splits. We try to fill them up, but man-made structures doesn't react the same way that the uh, natural rock behaves. Natural rocks can be welded together or joined together, eventually, you know, subsiding in a way that settles. But the man-made structure may hide those cavities if we fill them up on top, they will not collapse immediately. They will keep a surface which looks normal. And then over time, as the erosion, as the dissolution of the material, sand and the concrete happens, we will end up with uh, numerous cracks, sinkholes, subsidence that we don't have any evidence for them until they happen. And when they happen, that is the damage done. So for this to actually be correctly mapped and the town be safely built again, we have to wait this natural process, this cycle of 10 years, take over, and then after that, we can think about the uh, rebuilding it. Bedrock and uh, uh, volcanic rock have to settle. Then after that, we can actually start to build over them again with our man-made material. I have videos about this 10 years, why it was 10 years, for example, for Krefler fires, and why I think it takes for the Vegasio system another 10 years. I'll put the videos at the end, you can watch them also. What's happening to the Swartzengian Grindavik is not unique. We have a historical case for this thing, and I will analyze it for you. Uh, in the November, early November, 10 and 11th November, we had a swarm of earthquakes in the area from the Blue Lagoon or Swartzengi to the uh, Thorbjorn and the Grindavik. We had a rock fall, r rocks from the cliffs falling down, and the cracks appearing in the ground that we can see now. The result of the magma pushing under the rocks and lifting the land was this rock falls. We had the evidence for it. Uh, by the GPS data, interferometry also showed us that the magma is accumulated under this area and is evolving, is gradually rising the ground. We had the extension also due to the uh, mid-Atlantic ridge being opened. The result of it was a fall in the Grindavik to the Blue Lagoon area and rise on both sides of it. It's practically a rift valley forming there. This rift valley has now gradually subsiding in the way of activity, but we have parallels to this in the Krafla volcano in the north of Ireland, in the Iceland, in the similar uh, setting when we had uplift and downfall, uplift and downfall between each eruption. Magma needs to accumulate between the big events that they don't reach the ground. We have a smaller event that gradually build up magma under the crust and then this erupts eventually we had nine eruption events and 15 uplift uh, during the Krafla fires this was famous from 1975 to 1984 and this is all related to this activity by the pulling of the earth crust stretching it rising the magma because of the cavity created magma rises depressurizes, the gas bubbles forms, creates pressure, 
and eventually reach the surface. We are just at the beginning of this in the in the Green Devil Can the Sourcing in Blue Lagoon area. A lot of things have yet to happen. This is just the first stage of it. It may happen tomorrow, it may happen in several months from now, but this will eventually happen. This is the event that we have seen in Krefla is going to happen here again, it seems. When the mid-Atlantic reach, uh, reaches the Iceland, it has created several peninsulas. One of them is the Reckinus Peninsula, created by the volcanic system that you see the names of them here. They are technically similar to the bodinage uh, structure, shear structures that we see in the rocks. Is the extension creating fault lines and the fault lines through them the lava may erupt. We see them in the in micro scale in, in the rocks. You can make it with a plasticine if you have the time, a model of that. And the extension can create fault lines that the um, lava can rise through them. In the case of the, um, the systems, these systems are directly connected to the mantle. Fagodesvia volcano was a such a volcanic system. We found that with this discovery that this Fagodesvia was connected actually to the earth mantle through a dike. The dike is feed, fed by the mantle. And as the uh, eruption happens in this area in 2021 in Fagodesvia, 22 in the Meridil and Little Horto in the 2023, it may happen and extend to the years beyond from 2025 will be a slight angle toward the east, uh, as you see in the uh, other systems parallel to it toward the east. And by 2030, it's quite possible that this system may reach the Reckoness or the suburbs of it. This is the day that you will see the volcanoes actually erupting inside the town or near the outskirts of the town. This is a scary scenario. And this is one of the several scenarios that may happen. This volcanic system may not reach as far as the Reykjavik, uh, but in this model that I presented, if it reaches there, that will be just outskirts of the town.